This week, CCN secured a rather remarkable interview with the Secretary of the Nobel Committee in Oslo on the awarding of the Peace Prize this year, being given to two journalists, independent journalists, Maria Ressa and Dmitry Muratov of the Philippines and Russia, respectively. Both of them have suffered amazingly under their uh, professional careers and continue to do so. Both arrest, imprisonment, threats and several of their colleagues being murdered by authorities. We thought you'd like this interview because in the words of the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, these journalists represent other journalists all over the world. And in particular, we thought that touched a tone with our independent journalism based here on the Central Coast. Sit back and enjoy. Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2021 to Maria Ressa and Dmitry Muratov for their efforts to safeguard freedom of expression, which is a precondition for democracy and lasting peace. Thank you for agreeing to be interviewed by Central Coast Newspapers. The news uh, just a little while ago that uh, your committee has awarded the Peace Prize to two journalists and in your quotes you said on behalf of journalists all over the world. Why did you make that decision? Uh, well, I guess for several years uh, the Norwegian Nobel Committee has wanted to do something to acknowledge the importance of journalism for human rights, democracy, and, and peace. Uh, and this was the year to do it. There's um, the two journalists involved have had a very hard time in their respective countries. Do you think that awarding them those prizes will, um, will further their cause or, uh, or make, their, um, make their jobs more difficult? Well, we definitely hope that it will make things easier for them and that it will serve their, their costs in a good way. Uh, but you never know, of course, uh, when you deal with authoritarian regimes or regimes that have authoritarian features, uh, you, you cannot know for sure how the government uh, will respond. I think so far it seems pretty encouraging uh, I will say so. So, so we do hope, yes, that this will be something that they will benefit from. Uh, the the Nobel Peace Prize Committee has uh, has never shied away from controversial decisions. Uh, recently, you um, you awarded uh, a peace prize to uh, to a Chinese artist uh, whose name I can't pronounce but uh, and Norway um, we understand suffered somewhat for that decision. Yes that's right uh, the award to Liu Xiaobo uh, in 2010 was very badly received by the Chinese government. Uh, the Chinese government refused to accept that the Norwegian Nobel Committee is completely independent from the Norwegian government. Mm -hmm. So it decided to look upon that award as an insult by the Norwegian government. And mm -hmm. they responded in kind. Um, but we have so far no indications that either the Russian government or the Philippine government will react in that way. And on your uh, summation of the prize to do with journalism, uh, it states in, your, in the committee statement that um, free and independent journalism is a forerunner um, prerequisite for uh, democracy and freedom uh, around the world. Is this, something that, uh, is this something that you think is a real issue um, in today's world? Definitely so. I think part of the backdrop here is that uh, freedom of speech and freedom of press is under pressure uh, almost all around the world, even in the West. Uh, and we all know about the problems with, with false facts uh, mm. and um, 
I think this is something we should really worry about. Uh, there is, I mean, democracy builds on the presupposition, uh, presu uh, sorry, um, on the precondition that we have a, a opinion that, uh, that is informed. Without an informed public, uh, you cannot have a true democracy. And you cannot really have an informed public today uh, unless you have a free, independent, fact-based uh, journalism. Well, you mentioned that, that uh, obviously in, in part of the East, uh, journalism t is tightly controlled and, uh, and uh, editorial opinion is, um, is, is self-censored in many regards. But also in the West, the ownership structures of, um, of media organisations have been under question as well. Do, do you see that equally as a problem as uh, authoritarian regimes? It is a problem of another kind, but mm -hmm. it's still a problem uh, because it, it raises questions about the independence of the press. Uh, so I think this is something we should look more critical at also in our Western democracies. We note from research that um, Norway and uh, many of your Nordic neighbours rate very highly to do with press freedom. Is, is, is this uh, a case of the Nordic countries looking outward and um, saying that you know, uh, other countries should be more like them? I expected that question with <laughs> an observation or later. It's a good observation, of course, that uh, we, we score very high. Uh, I think th this is, of course, nothing uh, the, con the committee has taken into consideration at all. Uh, but it's interesting to observe that the Nordic countries not only top the list with regard to press freedom, uh, but also regarding uh, people's confidence in their governments. Mm -hmm. And that is very interesting because I think what makes many of the authoritarian regimes against or afraid of press freedom is that they fear that that will make uh, people less confident, mm. trust them less. Uh, but the opposite seems to be the case. When you allow free speech and a free independent press, it actually builds uh, trust for the government. Mm. Uh, so um, there are some some interesting uh, connections here, which uh, which uh, mm. I hope we will address more. Uh, yes, we will have uh, a time to come back to that and address it perhaps uh, at the Peace Prize ceremony in in December. Yes, well, the um, just for uh, for the viewers for the viewers out there, we um, we note that the Peace Prize of all of the Nobel Prizes is awarded by the uh, committee, an independent committee of the Norwegian Parliament. Take us instead of uh, the Swedish uh, Institute in Sweden. Take us a little bit back through the history of that. Why is that the case? Well, actually, we don't know for sure, because mm. Alfred Nobel, the, the inventor of dynamite, as you know, mm. uh, who established these prizes uh, through his testament, his will, he, he never said why, mm. why Norway should have the peace prize. Uh, at that time, Norway and Sweden were part of a union. Mm -hmm. We had the same king. And, and of course, Sweden, the big bigger state was the dominant part of that uh, union. Uh, and perhaps uh, Alfred Nobel thought that even the little brother, Norway, should have its share in this prize. Mm. Uh, but some scholars have argued that he probably thought that the Norwegian parliament was more democratic uh, than the Swedish. Mm. Um, so, so that is prob probably the, the, the main hypothesis why he chose Norway for the Peace Prize. And uh, is, there, uh, is there still some, some, uh, some rivalry with, um, as you call it, the big brother um, in Sweden with the award of this uh, very popular prize? 
I will not say so. Mm -hmm. uh, the Swedes have four other prices <laughs> uh, plus the price in economy. Mm. So, so I think they 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 feel they have got a fair share in this. Now we we note on our research um, when I look at the uh, the peace prizes that have been awarded to the regions around the world, Africa and Asia, Europe, the Americas. There's only um, there's only two that have ever been awarded to Oceania, as you as you categorise it in uh, Jonas uh, Jonas Horta from uh, from East Timor and his compatriot. Um, why do you why do you think that is? Is it just the fact that the region's um, so small, or is it just um, that the nominations just don't come in? Well, uh, nominations clearly had something to do with this. Mm. Uh, without nominations, the prize cannot be awarded mm -hmm. to some countries. Um, so that that's definitely part of the explanation. And then the next question then becomes why so mm. few nominations and I mean, Australia and New Zealand have been mm. peaceful countries throughout mm. this period uh, where the price have, has existed. Mm. Uh, so that is also probably a main, mm. major part of the explanation. Yes, Perhaps an accolade to some extent. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's right. Well, um, all right. Well, look, uh, thank you for speaking with us uh, with Central Coast Newspapers and um, our, our listeners. We've, we've written an article and... Uh, Thank you very much for uh, you know, making yourself uh, available for the, for the interview. My pleasure. Thank you.